Let us worship God together in community and each of us in our own way, young and old, responding to God's goodness and God's call to us, seen, heard and experienced in many different ways and in different symbols and languages. As we come to worship this morning, we begin by placing the red paraments in the worship space. They are rich with meaning for today's Pentecost celebration, the birthday of the church. On the communion table, we see a crown made up of crosses, topped with the flames of Pentecost. We light the candle to remind us of the light of Christ in our lives. We open the Bible to symbolise the ways we hear the word of God. On the pulpit, the spirit dove, on the pulpit, the spirit dove descends, overlaid with three points, three flames pointing to the Trinity. On the lectern, five seeds sit under gum blossoms, all encased in flame. Just as much Australian flora needs fire to crack open the seeds for regeneration, so too can we come to our full flowering by the fire of the Spirit. On the stole are falling water droplets that represent the living waters of Christ and remind us of our baptism. Today's worship takes the Pentecost theme, hearing in our own language, which the young people and I have been discussing in the past weeks. We celebrate the many languages that can communicate the Spirit's messages to us in the church. Some of these languages will work better for each of us than others will, but the others will work well for other worshippers alongside us. We're a diverse community, yet one in Christ. One such language is the vibrant language of modern music. So let us stand, if we are able, and sing along or just listen to the video clip as we feel comfortable. 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy Bless the Lord. 
worship your holy name You're rich in love and you're slow to anger Your name is great and your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on saying this service of worship. Those here in the sanctuary and those at a distance who will join via electronic means at a later time. All are members of our community of Christ and all are equally welcome. Today's service has been prepared by a team including our youth members. They will participate in leading our worship and also as a camera operator in the recording team. We acknowledge that we worship on the land that was home to generations of the Ghana people, the traditional owners of this area. We honour them and the traditional owners of all places where this service goes for their custodianship of the land and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. We also acknowledge and give thanks for all those who have gone before us in our places of worship. And now let's join together in prayer. God of love and wonder, we remember today. The Spirit came and your church was born in wind and fire and words of power. The Spirit came blowing fear aside and in its place weak hearts were stronger. The Spirit came, as your word foretold, with dreams and signs, visions and wonders. The Spirit came and is here today to feed the hearts of a world that hungers. In the quietness, we listen to our breathing, the air filling our lungs, giving life and energy. With the ear of the heart, we listen for the breath of God, the pneuma, the spirit animating the soul, nourishing us with creativity, sensitizing us to the yearning of God, to the divine joy 
and pain. We offer thanks for all of this and long to worship today in spirit and in truth. Amen. A reading from Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of many other countries. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new, filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleventh, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken throughout the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. To repeat, the hearer said, In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Let's see how that might have been experienced now. Hear about the powerful acts of God. Hören Sie die großen Taten von Gott. Denga tentan tindakan tuhan lua yang lua dipiasa. Ascoltate le potenti atti di Dio. Entendez parler des merveilles de Dieu. But spoken language is not the only language that we use. And it was great that we had the signing language. And uh, many of the languages we use have been explored this morning and we will be exploring through different mediums. But one of the uh, other uh, ways we use language is through sign and symbol. Now this is a focus for the the younger ones. So if you want to, you can see the screen from where you are because we're going to have some pictures on the board. And I want to talk to you this morning about uh, signs and symbols. And we're going to start off with a a couple of uh, symbols and see if you can recognise which ones they are. The best iced coffee in Australia, right? Very recognisable when you're interstate and you want an iced coffee, you go through the fridge and you go, ah, iced coffee, I feel like I'm home of South Australia. Well, I do anyway. Uh, so what's the uh, next one? And how do we know that? Just do it. Yeah. So the Nike tick. So we recognise this symbol, very recognisable. 
because you all said it. Okay. Mitsubishi. The three triangles of the Japanese car company, a manufacturing company. What about the, I reckon uh, there should be a prize for the first one who can get this next symbol. <laughs> okay, you've all got Hungry Jacks, right? <laughs> Sorry, what? Oh, no. Ah, no, McDonald's, we all recognise the golden arches as our symbol for fast food delicacies. Well, for some, anyway. This morning, I want to also ask a question. Um, do you recognise this symbol? Oh, you do. I'm sure there are some who don't. It's the symbol of... It's the logo of the Uniting Church. So this morning, I want to unpack that symbol just a little bit so you can understand that the Holy Spirit is very central to the Uniting Church's understanding of life and ministry. And so I thought, well, I'll start with unpacking this. So if we take away all the other symbols, we're left with the dark circle. The dark circle represents the world. The world without God, the world without Christ is, is dark, and we wait for the light of Christ to come, uh, so, so it says. So then we think, well, the next symbol that we might use is we place the cross. Now, we notice that the cross is, is light colour, it's white, and when we place this over the, uh, the black circle, we see that the, church is the, the cross is central to our Christian faith. What is this? A smile. I haven't heard that before about the United Church, but I think it's a good analogy. A smile. What else might it be? A boat. Okay, I like that. And maybe one other thing. A U. I like that. Why is it a U? Uniting. So why isn't it a complete circle? Because we're not finished yet. We're not the United Church. We are the Uniting Church. So we've got a long way to go. In fact, we probably never get to be fully united. But it's the uniting, and it's about uniting. It's about bringing people together. It is also, yes, a smiley face. I like that. It is also a U, but it's also, yes, in the shape of the hull of a boat. And when we put the cross in that symbol, it sort of does look like sails or a mast in a boat. And when you place it alongside the symbol of the World Council of Churches, of which the Uniting Church is a part of, we see that looks like a boat in the waters, the, the, and the symbol meaning ecumenical, uh, the, the words meaning unity, World Council Churches logo. We put that alongside the Uniting Church symbol, and it looks very similar. So that links us to the worldwide uh, council of churches across the world as well in the Uniting Church. And what do we see there? A dove. And what's the dove doing? It's, it's resting, it's floating. And fire, what does the fire represent? Flame, spirit, warmth, energy, passion. So when we put all that together, we've got the dove of the Holy Spirit that comes and central to the part of the life of the church. So when we put all these symbols and signs together, or when we take them apart, we see there are many of them, but put them all together and we see that that is the Uniting Church. That's our logo. So we can see that the cross is very central of, of Christ. We see the Holy Spirit, the flame, the Pentecost flame that we're celebrating today is important and very central. And the U of uniting, we're onward going. We're always going to be uniting and moving forward. So that's my time this morning. The Uniting Church, the Uniting Church. So we're going to stand and sing a song, uh, if you're able to sing, and it's, uh, it's filled with the Spirit's power. Let's stand and sing. Oh, oh, oh. 
Another kind of language is art, in this case, painting. This painting illustrates the next reading, which gave ancient people the, an explanation of why different people spoke different languages. That was the situation that the coming of the Spirit in our Acts reading counteracted, making the message understandable to all in their own languages. A reading from Genesis. And the whole world was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had lime for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower with which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their speech, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Spoken languages are one kind of language. Art on a canvas is another. Yet another is the language of flowers. As I was uh, preparing the flowers for today, I, first of all, you have to use what's available. And fortunately, Ruth Pitt said, I've got some lovely red gladiolus, so I was able to collect them. And then um, I collected other bits and pieces, and Ruth also gave me this beautiful yellow fruit. And so what I tried to do for Pentecost was to create this column of colour coming up and then blossoming out and showering out all over, um, you know, sort of th this movement from, from this coming up. There's a movement with what I've done. So I actually really enjoy doing it. I was asked about why flowers in worship this week, and I had to think about that. And for me, it's actually bringing the outside in. It actually, with all the square things, a bit like these here, that lifts, the, these symbols lift the red colour. So there is movement in the flowers, and it brings something of nature into the church. I'm going to read a couple of poems, and they are by Russ Talbot. And he is a member, or he's associated with Christ Church, Uniting Church in um, Wayville. And he discovered the pleasure of writing poetry after suffering from an um, ABI, that's acquired brain injury, as a result of a brain tumour. In a previous life, he'd obtained degrees in computing and management and has studied created community created communication in this life. And so with him, poetry starts noticing things. And uh, so he's written two poems in this little book about flowers. And the first one is The Philosophy of Cut Flowers. The thing about cut flowers is that they put you in the moment. With cut flowers, the only place that they make sense is now. Tomorrow, they'll be in the bin. Like an ice sculpture, all that work, all that beauty, gone. Why didn't they carve it in stone? Then it'd last forever. Exactly. Beauty is honed by brevity. The poignancy of its existence, of its brief existence, not a tragedy, but a piquancy. With beauty, with cut flowers, 
If you're not in the moment, you've missed the point entirely. And the second reading is about flower arranging, and I've been part of a, flower, a floral art group here in Morialta for in McGill for about eight or nine years now. And so this is about flower arranging. I watch you work, the considered selection and mindful placement of just the right bud, just the right leaf, just the right frond, just the right colour. I watch you judge, your hand guided by an innate sense of beauty and balance of what's right. I watch it bloom, the whole even more beautiful than its beautiful parts. I watch you weaving your soul into your work. And you say you are not a poet. Instrumental music is another kind of language that can help us focus on and engage in God with God in worship. Another way that contemplative music can speak the Spirit's messages to us is if we sing it. Let us remain seated and sing together, together in song 706, Bless the Lord. And we'll repeat it until the music stops. Note that the words are some of the same ones that we sang earlier in a different style. reading from John's Gospel. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. 
you also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I still have many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever, whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So what is our language? What is the language of the church? The language of the followers of Christ. What is the language of the Spirit? The Spirit of God and whom we worship today. We've explored what it means and we've experienced a diverse range of languages this morning in our worship. And one that actually hasn't been explored or mentioned is the language of play. That I've been very blessed to watch Soraya build the temple or the, the Tower of Babel uh, at the front during the service and then dismantle it again. So the, one of the languages of, of worship is play and interaction and experience. The language of music and song, the language of art, the language of creation, of flowers, the language of verbal language and of signing language, the, vi the language of sign and symbol. And we've been led this morning by the language of our youth in creativity and expression, of thought in their worship and their language and what they bring to our shared worship together. We've experienced the language this morning of community, of being one together, gathered together in Christ, the church. We've even engaged in singing the same words through two very different songs, Bless the Lord, my soul, an ancient praise song to modern music and to a prayerful chant. Two different tunes, but the same message. We've listened to the biblical language this morning of the readings, and we've heard of the story of Babel, the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament, which talks of one becoming diverse. We've heard the story from Acts of the day of Pentecost, the story that talks about diversity becoming one, like a reversal or a reintegration. But how? How has that happened? By the very Spirit of God, enabling people to hear in their own language the same message. Not that there was one language all of a sudden, but rather many languages hearing the one message, the mighty acts of God. But it got me thinking, what is the mighty acts of God? What are they? What is the language of the mighty acts of God? And I think the mighty acts of God, or the mighty language of God, is love. The love of God the desire of God to love and the action of God to love. John's Gospel, chapter 3, reminds us that it is God who loved the world so much. And then it goes on. So loved the world, or all of creation, the whole cosmos. And I believe that that action of love, at its core, is unity. It is unity. Unity bringing to life or reinvigorating or regenerating, becoming one. The Babel experience was dispersed. The Acts reading is about integration, the movement of the Spirit of God, the breath of God, that unifies and forms community. Language is both powerful and gentle, and we realise this in the Acts reading. That mighty wind that blew through that room 
and tongues of fiery flames that rested upon them. Noise and commotion and language. Yet there is gentleness in that story. We read that the flames rested on the people. And if you cast your eye over to the altar area over there for the 815 service, if you can see it, the flames are gently alight. Gentleness in the noise. Isn't it the same with us? Some people speak of a mighty conversion experience. A moment when the Holy Spirit grabbed them and shook them and they became a Christian and were filled with the Holy Spirit and did all sorts of wonderful things. Others speak of an awareness, of a gentle awareness over time, of a realisation of the life and love and the Spirit of God in their life. The same Spirit moves in mysterious ways. And St Paul writing to the church in Corinth says that there are many gifts There are a diversity of gifts, but it is the one Spirit who gives diversity in unity. So today we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit that is for all and all of the cosmos. I think Pentecost is less of an outpouring of God's Spirit and more of an outpouring of an awareness of God's Spirit, alive and blowing. It's about the followers of Christ being empowered to bring God's resurrection life to all of creation. Pentecost is a far more far-reaching and significant than just one person's experience. Pentecost is about us. It's about the church. It's about us coming alive and being infused to share in ministry. That means when we receive God's gift as an empowerment comes responsibility. A responsibility to grow and to share, to respect, to love. The language we acknowledge today is the very breath of God that blows in different ways. God's very breath, the ruach or the pneuma of God, sustaining all of life. It's the same spirit that brooded over creation. It's the same spirit that took Ezekiel to prophesy about those dry bones. It's the same spirit that rested upon Jesus at his baptism. It is the same spirit that drove Jesus into the wilderness. And it's the same spirit of Jesus who breathed on the disciples. And is the same spirit that blew throughout the gathered church on the day of Pentecost. It is the same Spirit today calling us and enabling us to speak the mighty acts of God in a a diverse way. It is the same Spirit that is calling us to love and to serve God and to love and to serve others and to walk humbly with our Lord. And as we reflect on these words and upon the languages that we've shared today, through art and sign and flower and music and play and words and even silence, let us respond to the mighty acts of God by making our offering this morning as our language of giving and serving today. Your offering will be received as we are ministered to by Casey and Gill, again, sharing the the language of music and worship together.
God of all, may these gifts, given here and by electronic means, be used to further your reign of love in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let's join in our prayers for others. In this act of prayer, O oh God, our lives are opened to you, and with them, our world. We pray that your spirit will whisper through every heart and every place where the voice of your presence is silent or inaudible in the pressure and busyness of life. We ask that your spirit will challenge and empower all who are weak, broken, diseased or weeping. We pray that your justice may be the goad to action for those who hold power to change situations for the better. We hold before you those who are hungry, cold, or despairing, and those living in fear. We long for your spirit to inspire all who follow you to think, speak, and live as true imitators of Christ, so that our world and all who live in it may know peace, healing, and reconciliation with you and with each other. Bless us, O Lord, that we may become the building blocks of your kingdom among us. In Jesus' name. And we join to pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us stand, if we are able, to sing together, Spirit Friend. phrase was attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, but when you look it up on the internet, it actually says he never said those words, apparently, but we're still going to use them today. Go and preach the gospel at all times, and sometimes use words. The language of ourselves. Go into this world and have the courage to take hold of what is good, Never pay back wrong for wrong, 
Let compassion be your companion and forgiveness your constant friend. Keep the fires of the Spirit burning. Seek always what is best and keep the faith. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship and excitement and the buzz of the Spirit keep you and be with you until we meet again. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord.